Hello, <laughs> this is Full Out Japan. I didn't see you there. But you probably know this song, right? Well, for those who know, don't know, this is Plastic Love from Takeuchi Maria, or Maria Takeuchi, as you please. It's just a matter of the Japanese name. And you probably also know that, as a genre, this is called city pop, or city pop in Japanese. It's basically the same. But how much do you know about it? What is city pop? Is it just like chill vibes? Is it just a bit of like a nostalgic kind of song? Let's look a bit in more into it by looking at the lyric. As per usual, it's good to look at the title to kind of get an idea of what the song is all about. So looking at the title, there's one huge word, which is love. So you can kind of guess that this is, well, a song about a relationship of any kind. I wrote this right because usually when you think about love, there are many adjectives or other words, words that you can kind of combine with it. You know, love as this idea of something warm, of something that is soft, something that is, you know, passionate, and so on. However, this time the word love, it's not that all that it is. There's also the word plastic, which, you know, it's not the usual word that you put like before love. Actually, let's, you know, think a bit more about plastic. What's like important about plastic? Not much. Uh, and that's actually the point. Plastic is cold. Plastic is not that strong. Uh, plastic is also cheap. And it's overall and somewhat negative, also kind of like as a fake um, kind of aiming to, to that too. So, you know, that kind of gives an insight of what this song is going to be all about. It's going to be, going to be about love, but with a lot of exceptions. So let's look a bit more into it. So let's have a look at the song in each part and let's analyze each of them. So first, let's start to listen to the first part. Okay, let's look a bit more into this part. So, um, I really like this first part of the song because it kind of works as in kind of like two blocks merging together. What do I mean by that? Well, there's line one and line three, which really have a lot of like common words for, you know, love songs, especially in Japan. Actually, let me highlight them for you. For example, sudden kiss. Uh, no kiss, or intense gaze, atsue manadashi, uh, and also in the other um, in the other line, there's the ai and wakare, uh, which is you know the first meeting and the last goodbye or like parting ways in general. Um, these words are really common in especially in the very classic Japanese love songs because they are common topics, you know. The first time we met or the last goodbye we say to each other or what really you know made my uh, heart skip a bit was a sudden kiss or was your intense gaze and while we have this the two other lines are very cold uh, what do i mean like by that well you know there's this first word koi which is passionate love but then it's followed by program i couldn't really translate you know program a program directly, mainly for a problem of style, I actually change that into a schedule. But program is actually a word that is tied to 
the programming world, as in like computers, which at the time they first started to kind of spread in Japan too. And, you know, their first idea of like a PC is something that, you know, works only from point A to point B, doesn't admit any other exception. If there's an exception, it just like stops working. It's very cool. It's like not the, not the best word to use combined to passion, to koi. And uh, another like word that really like, you know, stucks, it's uchikomu. Um, in the English translation, I, I use this word which is fill in, but in Japan you can say fill in in many different ways. Uchikomu itself, it's, li it's literally like, like typing in on a keyboard. And so it's kind of like as if someone is kind of putting in all the data for a schedule kind of log. Uh, and that's, this is like what it's all about, you know. Uh, I guess what kind of this song wants us to understand is that for the speaker, love is nothing but a program that has, you know, a start and has to have an end, which is already scheduled. So there's no need to hurry. Don't hurry. That's what Takeuchi-san is saying to us. It's like, yeah, you can, you know, you can try all as much as you want to kind of try and seduce me, but I already decided when this is going to end. So no need to rush towards the ending. Let's just like, you know, enjoy this time over here. I also like find very interesting the presence of English. This song is not that recent, uh, which means that comes from a time when, you know, Japan kind of started getting in touch with uh, Western music. And so some artists kind of like used to pick up some, I guess, pre-made like words from a song here and there and started putting them in their own songs. They're kind of like, it kind of work as in, I guess, a small decoration. And this Don't Hurry, it's one of them. Uh, let's see how this theme kind of progress in the rest of the song. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted that into a really fun part. But um, this part, I guess, it's the part that really go gives off a lot of like modern girl kind of vibes. And we're talking modern girl in the 80s. So, you know, pick that with a grain of salt. Uh, well, you know, it kind of wants to start from an evolution from the classic, you know, average girl. Uh, there's a really like common topic in a lot of like love songs in Japan where all women, you know, kind of get scarred by love at a certain age, maybe when they're already older, and that stays with them forever. Uh, but, you know, and it kind of it kind of says the same here, you know, since that day when I got hurt by love. However, I guess the modern part of that is that this girl, this lady, it's not, you know, destroyed by it. She just like find, found a new way of life, which is, you know, inverting light and day, uh, basically meaning that she goes, you know, to discos, especially the one, you know, that are very popular at the moment, dances all night. And then she, you know, uses this trick that she learned to kind of like have this very, I guess, short stories or program stories with partners in general. And yeah, it kind of like gives you an idea of what was, you know, I guess, popular at the time. Uh, you know, the disco, you know, it's such a, was such a new word at the time that it's, you don't have the, you know, the corrective word in katakana, they actually left that over here because it doesn't really fit too much in the Japanese language yet. And so, you know, it's just like a word there. And again, uh, she kind of like keeps this kind of, I guess, like childish uh, aspect to it, which you can kind of like see that from the word majutsu. Majutsu is literally like a magic trick. Uh, it, it's something that I guess like a child would like because you know it's kind of like the same magic trick that a magician would make and that's her magic trick that's kind of like her i guess charm uh to kind of like you know keep going on with life uh and then again in the end we have the same um you know closing sentence in english in this case it's i'm sorry which again 
worked in the same way and in the previous part too, where they where she said, "Don't hurry." Okay, sorry for the dancing. And now, actually, let's do this. Okay, let's look at this part a bit more into detail. Um, well, this part really goes into, you know, the idea of love of the main character, uh, which, you know, it's very much expressed in this line. Koyo nante, tada no game. Love is nothing but a game. And again, this love, it's not this love. Uh, this koi, it's more like passionate love. So, you know, passion itself, it's nothing but a game. There's no actually real feeling of affection. It's just a game. And so, you know, it's just for fun. As long as you have fun, you should be fine with it. That's what this line actually means. And uh, this is kind of like a remodeled translation, but the general sense is that, you know, if you had fun, you should be satisfied. That's, that's all you get. You don't get the feeling kind of part. And even, you know, all that is like around it, as in like, you know, kazaru, as in like the decorations, is just, you know, I guess a box. Uh, it's just like a flashy dress and shoes. And they themselves are my lonely companions. You are not my companion. I'm flirting with you, but you are nothing but, you know, I guess um, a playmate, I guess, or somebody who is playing a game with me. And that's why you should never love me for real. Don't think that there's like a real feeling over there. It's just a game. And that's what this part is all about. We're kind of skipping over the, the small solo, but you know, we're looking at the lyrics, so. Okay, so I guess this part is kind of where the true personality of the main character kind of shows up. You know, in the first lines, she's really like, I guess, putting out this image of, yeah, love is just a game. I don't care. I have no affection for you. In this part, I guess the main character kind of opens up a little bit. Uh, still, she still maintains this, I guess, appearance of a very cold woman, which we'll see also in the next part. But, uh, you know, some, I guess... Uh, openings in in the heart kind of start to, to show up what do i what do i mean by that well you know she really starts again with this i guess idea that love is just a game so even like all the people who kind of try to to lure her in are always so funny to her because i guess it's kind of like this kind of i guess play that she really got used to it it's always the same and that's why they kind of i guess really look like him this him it's most likely you know, even in the Japanese uh, way of writing it, one of his, like, previous, I guess, partner. Um, and that's why, you know, uh, the memories of, you know, him and this new guys uh, kind of overlap. However, you know, the memory of him, it's not necessarily something that she got over. Uh, it's still there. And so one may, sometimes she might actually, you know, suddenly drop her glass, you know, as in, like, she kind of has... I guess, a skip of a heart and start to tear up remembering this. But in this case, you know, that's not something that this new partner should kind of look into it. She even used this uh, word, which is tazune nai. Tazuneru, it's, it's one of the many ways to actually mean to ask something. But tazuneru, it's, I guess, more polite. Polite in Japanese also means from a distance. Uh, this is not the word that you would like use to a potential love partner. You would use kiku, kite ne. 
that's probably what you heard like in a lot of like sentences but tazuneru it's keeping a distance because again maybe you might look like him maybe you might flirt like him you maybe are going to make me remember of him but i don't care i don't need it that's what the general meaning of this part is okay we are almost at the closing part so let's listen a bit more Okay, uh, let's get into this part, which is, you know, well, you probably don't need to know, but I'll tell you, my favorite part. <laughs> uh, why so? Well, this part, it's kind of, I guess, what to me at least gives off the most city pop vibes. Why so? Because it kind of like, I guess, describes the, the scenario in which, I guess, this whole love story kind of takes place. It kind of describes, doesn't describe actually the relationship or love in general, but, you know, describes I guess what's in the background and it's you know the background of a Tokyo especially of a big town which is turning into a huge metropolis uh, with a lot of things that are I guess foreign to many people why am I saying that well there's a lot of like words that you know kind of tie to I guess the big works that uh, were happening at the time for example Kosoku the highway uh, highway was like something relatively new in Japan at the time uh, it was, I guess, it came from the U.S. for, you know, it was mainly built for the circulation of a lot of, like, like cars in general. But uh, contrary to, I guess, a lot of other towns, Japan, especially at night, you know, it's not so lively. It is, you know, people walk in the street. They don't drive in the street. And so it's like this really, like, strong image of, you know, thinking of the highway which is like such a long road which is supposed to be like bustling with like life in general but at night it's deserted it's so lonely it's something so cold uh, cold as the halogen light uh, halogen light i guess um when you well you know light in general sometimes it's tied to love uh, for example you know uh, you can think about you know um, a dinner with your partner only lit by a candle um, why is that romantic? Because the light itself is a bit warm. Um, halogen light are not warm. They are of this like whitish color. And it, they were something new at the time. And so again, yeah, she says that, you know, the only thing glimmering, kagayaku, is this, this halogen light. It's not even the stars. Halogen light are so powerful that for the first time in ages, even people who used to, you know, see the stars from their town stop seeing them. Uh, and so again, this is like plays again into this distance between, you know, I guess the outside world, this kind of like lost of warmth. And again, you know, if that wasn't enough, here there's also uh, kori, which is ice. Uh, kori no yoni tsumetayonna, um, you know, a, a woman cold as ice. So if you hear that, you know, I became such a woman, well, don't worry. This is just something that you shouldn't care of. Don't worry. I know that I am like that, but, you know, it's not that I want to be like this. It's this scenery that kind of make me so. I live in a big town. I live in the big town, actually. And so, you know, I, for to survive, I can only do this. So don't worry. This is just me. Okay, so this is the last part. It kind of repeats itself. So I'm, I'm just going to listen to it like one time, and then I'm going to briefly talk about it. So let's go. It just like keeps going like this. Um, as you probably have already kind of you know understood, this part is all in English. There's no like Japanese part. Um, I guess this is kind of like uh, the more like artsy part of the song. Why am I saying this? Well, because 
Well, first off, it's the only part where Plastic Love actually comes out. You know, you wait for, I guess, the title drop for all the song, and it only comes in the last part, uh, which is, you know, a bit repetitive. And also, again, plastic, plastic. You know, it gets repeated a lot, a lot of time. Why am I saying this is like a bit artsy? Um, well, because this part, again, last part, it repeats a lot of time. And this is the actual plastic beat. It's kind of like a bit like pop art where you kind of give the public what they want to have and then you know you're like yeah there you go you just came here for this well i'm just going to put this at the end of the song and you keep listening to this also i guess it's again a very like different shift different like vibe from the previous part why because the previous part it's you know even in the part where they are kind of like you know spoken in a cold way um in this part there's no feeling there's no you know talking about how the main character feels or how the city feels. It's just like this part that keeps playing and playing and playing because again, this is a plastic song, it's a plastic beat. And so, yeah, again, you can kind of say that this picks up on the trend of the music at the time where they had this like huge last part where they keep repeating the same things, but also there's that too. So, this is City Pop. Um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, you know, but if you were to define city pop, you know, that's kind of the difficult part. So I guess it kind of helps giving some like temporal coordinates about city pop. This song, for example, you know, it's from 1984. It's pretty old. Um, and so you can kind of see that city pop kind of shows um, a certain, I guess, vibe, a certain feeling in Japan around that time. Um, not all Japan. Uh, it was mainly, I guess, the Tokyo area, the metropolitan area. Why so? Well, you can kind of tell that, you know, it was only that area because it's not was not very heartfelt outside of the Tokyo area. It was very like a niche genre as well. Maria Takeuchi, you know, she kind of got rediscovered in the last six, seven years. And was mainly, you know, was first discovered abroad again. It was made in this, like, uh, part of this, like, playlist from, um, I think it's a French person. And then, you know, slowly started to pick it up again. But, again, the genre itself, city pop itself, never really died. It stayed in this, like, collective, you know, idea. Uh, and this, this kind of, like, idea of, you know, people kind of floating around in this new city, which, is, which was Tokyo at the time very cold city this idea of cold city comes a lot like very often in the lyrics of other songs at the time too but then it kind of like plays a lot into this female character these women that kind of float into the city and they are like not really attached to anything which you know it's very different from the image of you know women at the time uh, if you look at a lot of other songs too and so that's why I probably didn't pick up but why why is it like you know so treasured right now and while it was like you know kept in a sense, alive along all these years. Well, in a sense, there's a lot of like nostalgia effect um, that definitely plays a very huge role in it. But it's not necessarily just like nostalgia of like a lost time, uh, because that time actually happened. It's more like you know, kind of looking back at the past and you know, see a fork in the road. If you know, Japan went you know, towards the, the way where Maria Takeuchi, you know, kind of was going, then the future might have been different, but it did not. It's kind of like, you know, looking through, I guess, a weird kind of like mm, mystical sphere and see like all this like, I guess, cold color mixed together, mad, mis mixed together and, you know, it kind of, I guess, encapsulates a certain time frame in Japan. And that's why, you know, people still use it right now. It kind of like, remember, like feels like a very cold memory, but which is like somewhat still warm. What's warm, it's not the memory itself, it's the feeling inside it. And I guess that's why, you know, City Pop is so treasured right now as well. So this was, I guess, a taste of City Pop. How did you like it? Well, you know, there's a lot that can be said about it. But please, let me know if you want to kind of learn a bit more about that. And 
I might translate it in some of the next song too. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, you will find also the rest of the translation, you know, in the description down below. And stay tuned for more. Thank you again. This was Full Health Japan. Bye.